Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the Fresco water drop bottle video thing I did a while back. Um, I thought this would be useful to some people who are more interested in like uh, how like a short video like this is done as well as like the liquids and stuff. Um, so it's not really breaking down a full commercial but it's just like a little short video on like how um, this was made. So by the way, if you want to learn how to commercialize your work so you can monetize it in 2020, click the link in the description. I've got a video that goes deeper into that. You'll be seeing um, a brief view on the modeling. I don't want to spend my time focusing on that in this video. So if you want, you can uh, go through that and watch it, uh, slow it down if you really want to see how the bottle was modeled. Otherwise, you can just skip a few minutes ahead um, if you want to get into the juicy stuff. But I still wanted to leave the modeling part in here. Um, just in case uh, some people wanted to see how that was done, but so I'll let the modeling section play through and then we'll start with the breakdown. Cool, so um, here we've got our After Effects folder, a scene file, um, excuse the uh, watermark, I've been having some activation issues and it's been such a mission to try and sort that out and get it activated again, um, so I thought I would just do the tutorial without worrying about that. Um, so here we've got our scene file, so the uh, it seems like our Twixter is working, but the actual, um, how do I say? The motion blur uh, RSMB is not activating correctly. Um, and yeah, it's just been a mission to try and sort that out. So uh, luckily we don't need that. The Twixter part is kind of uh, important because it's uh, affected quite a bit. But the actual RSMB is just like an add-on which helps. Um, so here you can see our scene file. Uh, and I can even go and cache some of it through. And basically uh, this thing soup server you would have seen like a short clip of this thing um, and what it looks like uh, but basically it's just one scene file uh, liquid coming up and around and down and then we reveal the logo part so we'll start off with the logo section and then we'll dive into the 3d file so here we've got two logos essentially um, and then each logo so this one on the right is this layer here um, and this layer so how do I solo this thing while getting that so this layer is just a block with a gradient on and then we're using our actual fresco logo mask and that mask has a displacement map um, so uh, we're displacing our mask uh, with the displacement map of our actual logo and um, inside here is just like the actual logo files uh, Photoshop files and um, 
those things are being displaced and then we're using a black or a blue uh, square with a glow effect applied onto it to uh, basically use this as a mask. So here you go, Luma Matte. Whoops, I think I did the wrong file. So here we go, Luma Matte. And then I'll just use that mask uh, to mask everything out and give us this glow in here. Uh, it looks a bit weird, but obviously if you apply this background, um, it does fit in a bit better. Um, and it does blend in a bit better uh, with the whole background thing. So that's how we got the logo going and how, that's how we got this little uh, water ripples going in the logo um, by applying a displacement mask, by applying a displacement to the mask itself as opposed to this layer. Um, and yeah, so here you obviously you got a lot more control with the curves and uh, the gradients and stuff like that. Um, and this is just a simple text layer with a gradient applied to it. So that's it for the text. Um, the rest was done in 3D. I did use Twixter to slow stuff down. And the reason why I use Twixter is because RealFlow and uh, Cinema 4D doing time remapping in that is really hard to do. And it's hard to make changes. Whereas with Twixter and After Effects, um, it's easy to slow down and speed things up and make adjustments without having to re-render and re-simulate things every single time. Especially for like big simulations like this, it takes a while to render and update. Um, so this is why I did it with Twixter. The only downside with Twixter is I had to actually render it out in 75 FPS so that um, so I rendered out like a normal scene file, but in 75 FPS so that when we do stretch and slow things down, there's less uh, noticeable frame tearing and like uh, frames kind of a uh, uh, frame rate loss. There's still slight visibility with that, but it was good enough to the point where, um, yeah, it was just good enough. Uh, obviously it wasn't perfect, but again, if it's like a small video like this, um, how much do they really care <laughs> how perfect it really is? And that's why um, uh, I dealt with it. And uh, could have made it better, could have spent more time trying to get these little frames to uh, not show and all that, but it wasn't worth the time going through spending so much time just trying to fix that small issue, which honestly was import wasn't important. The important thing is I got this liquid going, got it around, and then falling at the right, right time and right place, got it looking uh, at least decent when it came down here. Didn't want it to splash and then go off on all over the place. Needed it to settle and splash and then spread out evenly um, and like in a smooth pattern. And that was the real thing that I was focusing on. So now we can dive into the actual 3D files. So here if I um, unsolo stuff, you can see we've got our bottle all the way down here, but we've got our liquids and stuff all the way out here. And the reason why is it's, for me at least, it's easier to cache at a large scale and then scale it down after it's cached. Um, it's actually faster and uh, it just works better in general. If you, if at least my experience, if I'm caching at like real world scale, it uses a lot more RAM and stuff and a lot more computing power and uh, it really just causes issues. So I scale, I like cache and do my simulations at a large scale. Um, and then I scale it down. So in terms of the liquids and the droplets and stuff, it honestly, it doesn't look the best, um, but it looks good enough. And that's all I cared about. Um, so here you can see, this is all, this is the only fact I was going for. Um, didn't look the best, I would say, but it looked good enough. That looks pretty real down there. Um, here is where it was like a little bit wonky, um, but it looked good enough. That's, that's all that mattered. Um, it didn't need to be like perfect water. I would have spent so much more time on a project like this, which honestly wasn't uh, that big of a deal to to get it looking super, super real. Um, it just needed to look real enough and you needed to have some water also just coming out and splashing all over like so. Um, so it didn't look like the stream was just like clunked in. We needed some water actually falling out of the stream, kind of like the that uh, bad Avatar movie where like when you look at the liquids and they're holding liquids in the water with their water bending and stuff, you can still see water sprouts coming out the bottom and like leaking out. And that's kind of the effect that I was going for here. Uh, making sure that water is also leaking out and coming out and like all very watery. And then things splash down. So here, if you look at our scene setup, it's pretty basic. It's just an emitter. We've got a despline, which uh, the emitter and the liquid is gonna follow and be attracted to with different forces. So the forces of this D-spline is gonna, it's like little attractions going up in a spiral. And uh, all it really was is just um, going on each of these little circles here and tweaking 
the strength to make sure that this thing always stayed inside of the spline going up um, but wasn't too strong where it looked like a little stream um, we needed like a little bit of so it was just tweaking like the strength to make sure that some water was spilling out but um, but the majority of the water was staying and spiraling up so a lot of that was just tweaking simulating tweaking simulating tweaking simulating until it looked right as we were going up and uh yeah that's pretty much uh the basics of it um if you know anything about real flow we've just got some surface tension we've got different noise fields placed here so for some reason the display of the field is not showing uh, but who knows they might have been an update since I made this project which is why they're not showing but if you look at the little um, pivot points this is where all the noise displacements are so we got um, one there, there 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 and the noise basically just breaks up the liquid so it looks more real because if it's uh, not breaking up the liquid uh, the liquid is just gonna go up into a little stream and then it's not going to look realistic. We need the liquid to have some turbulence and noise breaking up into pieces. So that's what that's for. And um, yeah, that's essentially it. So it goes up like this. And then at some point around here, I just turned off. Um, I turned off the the despline. So here you can see the despline and all these noise generators literally shutting off. And then we just let gravity do the rest. So the gravity demon over here um, will just make sure that the thing falls and then falls nicely and I might have animated some drag here I don't think so um, yeah and then it just falls spreads out and then there you go that's it and then uh, once you've cached everything uh, this is what it should look like the cache is quite big so uh, bear with my little laptop here when I did do this uh, whole thing uh, it was done on my workstation in South Africa but I'm on my laptop in Bali at the moment, so it's not as strong. And um, it might take a little bit of time to load this cache here. So, um, no, looks like this mesh cache is not loading, unfortunately. But we still got the liquids, um, which is good. And, um, yeah, so how can we scale this? Whoop, I just moved that by accident. How can we scale this down, the visibility of it? doesn't seem to be moving which is a bit annoying um, but yeah I can just turn this off so that we can look at our actual uh, bottle here so here we've got our camera and we've got our bottle camera is just a simple zoom in uh, nothing too hectic in terms of the actual scene animation it's just the camera uh, kind of zooming out as it goes along and uh, we can also take a look at our lighting so uh, I already showed a little bit about the modeling. Uh, lighting's pretty basic, just one light on the right, one light on the left, and then we've got a background light, because here you can see what a lot of people's scenes look like uh, when they don't have the background light. Um, it just kind of looks flat, and that background light really adds like a glow, adds some contrast and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I've kind of uh, explained uh, a lot of the lighting concepts in uh, my programs and training materials and stuff. Um, but you can see the differences with that and then here you can see we just got basic lighting um, here it honestly looks a little bit too so okay so we've got two actual lights that are on these are the ones that are soloed and um, so I might have tried a bunch of different lighting situations and these are the only ones that I kept so here we've got two lights uh, and it's not updating yeah, so here you can see uh, our two lights. I went and got rid of the mess. So this is just with the background light. If there's no background light at all, um, <laughs> you can see what this looks like here. Uh, I'm not too sure what's going on in this scenario and why it looks so weird. Oh, we've got so we've got this little HDRI which just fills in the light. Um, so if I turn that off, here we've got our background um, light over here, and then if we add in light number one you'll see what it looks like there and then we've got a, another light on this side to fill in that side so this is what it looks like when it's inverted um, just two lights lighting the scene uh, lighting the bottle pretty simple and then here you can see we've got like all these dark crevices and stuff and I just use this HDRI which is just a blue color to fill that in um, so that'll fill in some of those little dark areas and help uh, fill all that stuff up so this is what it looks like without the background light so you can see why that's uh, quite important. I've seen so many scenes that look like this um, and it's not that appealing. 
uh, so this background light really helps to add in a bit of glow. So that's the lighting of the scene. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that was done to uh, put this thing together. If I kind of briefly go over it, I've done this in so many videos where I've explained like the materials and the lighting and all that stuff. So just in this one, we're just quickly touching all over that, um, quickly touching over the stuff as opposed to uh, diving in detail and all the stuff which I've kind of gone through in a lot of videos in the past. So. Uh, yeah, that's how this kind of commercial and stuff was done. If you've got real flow and stuff, it should be pretty simple to try and set this up. The only tricky part is just making sure that uh, in places like this, like your uh, demons aren't colliding, like your little circles and attractors aren't um, intersecting each other. Otherwise, some of this water might pull up into there. Some of the water that's up there might pull down and you might run into issues like that. But the actual spiral and just setting the emission, um, you just set like a D-spline, put in a spiral, um, you put an emitter and then the water should follow up and then it's just kind of tweaking um, from here. Sorry, it's just tweaking the actual strength of all of these circles to make sure that the water stays inside and following along the spline, but also not having it too strong where all the water attracts into like one little stream and doesn't look as great. So it's a lot of tweaking, a lot of simulating. Um, so that's it for this video. Remember to click the link below in the description on how to commercialize your work so you can monetize it in 2020. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how the scene was done. So hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something and I'll see you on the next one.